Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. In this video, we're going to talk about what could possibly happen down here on Earth if we were to receive a solar flare CME type of event in modern times, like that occurred back in 1859. This is just a comparison of a, of a large event that occurred on February 15th that thankfully was not Earth-directed, but that extended out for a long, long ways, probably close to a Carrington-class event. Thankfully, again, it wasn't Earth directed, but we're going to take a look at what could possibly happen down here on Earth in modern times because we are entering solar maximum. It will peak in 2025, and there are a lot of things that could happen if we see a very large solar flare like Earth saw back in 1859. I've had several people ask questions uh, regarding that, and that's a very good question. We're going to take a look at that here in just a moment. Today, however, we saw more than one Earth directed M class solar flare, and you can see the particles coming towards the Earth. This is Mercury over here on the right. Over here at spaceweather.com, they're talking about more solar flares. The largest being a M4. Again, Earth-directed. There was a solar flare, tsunami, and radiation storm. A lot of things just happened all at once. Sunspot AR2975, which is right here. We're going to take a close look at that sunspot, courtesy of Carlos Skywatcher. You can find his YouTube channel linked down below in the description box. He zooms right in on that sunspot behind the Sahara sand. But back to the article over here at spaceweather.com. Once again, the M4 class solar flare created a tsunami, a solar tsunami you can see going through the atmosphere of the sun. It was detected down here in the ionosphere almost instantly as we live inside the corona of the sun, so the energy travels very quickly. You're looking at the sun today over here at the Solar Dynamics Observatory. You're going to see a, a solar flare right there, and you can see the CME come out. That's towards the Earth, and we we saw the particles over at the SOHO LASCO C3 instrument that are indeed headed this way. And here you're going to get a really good look at that Earth-directed M4 class solar flare. They're getting stronger and stronger. Here's the solar tsunami. See the shock wave that went through the, the atmosphere of the sun. And here you're going to see the ionosphere react to this energy you saw right here instruments detected that energy that monitor the ionosphere almost instantly. That's on the daylight side of the Earth, getting fully charged from that Earth-directed solar flare CME that should arrive sometime in about 48 hours. It wasn't moving extremely fast, but based off of the information we have here from the Space Weather Prediction Center, it should arrive sometime in 48 hours, give or take an hour. There's always a, a little bit of variancy because it's difficult to tell when you're looking straight on at these things and they're estimating that this should arrive sometime in about 48 hours. So what we're going to do is take that information that we have and we're going to calculate the approximate speed of the coronal mass that's headed towards the Earth right now as I do this video. Assuming that there's 93 million miles between the Earth and the Sun and assuming that the estimated arrival time of the CME that's coming towards the Earth right now is 48 hours, we can come up with the approximate speed of the CME. So we're going to take this one here, 93 million miles divided by 48 hours equates to 1.937 million miles per hour. Going back in time to the Carrington event, how fast was that CME moving? This one here was quite an extraordinary event. Again, 93 million miles divided by 17.5 hours. Not even a 24-hour travel time for the CME that was associated with the Carrington event, giving it a forward speed of 5.312 million miles per hour. That's how it was able to arrive here at planet Earth in less than one day. And if we were to see a storm like that in modern times, article over here at powergrid.com, dated today, March 28th of 2022, a large solar storm could knock out the power grid and the internet. An electrical engineer explains. Well-written article down here talking about the Carrington event of 1859, what happened back then, and what could happen today if the same type of event were to occur. It's a long article. Feel free to read the entire article down below. In fact, I 
I encourage it. I have a lot of people ask what could happen. The basics are it could definitely disrupt the satellites in low Earth orbit. It would create a lot of extra drag around the Earth where the satellites roam because of the, the density of the solar storm and the, the plasma cloud that's engulfing planet Earth. It would also affect the power grid because of the, the power surge and the ground currents that are absorbing this energy from the high-speed solar storm that's interacting with planet Earth. It could do a lot of things with regard to satellites, GPS, and the way that we communicate. Communication systems, especially on the daylight side of the Earth, would definitely be impacted by a Carrington-like event in modern times. And that's why we keep a close eye on the, the sun and the sunspots and the, the active regions that are facing the Earth. Like today, we've seen two Earth-directed M-class solar flares. Here's what the Earth-facing side of the sun looks like right now as I do this video. And you can see the large sunspot. This is the one where all the activity was at right here in this active region. We have another active region, a couple of sunspots turning towards the Earth from the southeastern limb of the sun. Coming over to Carlos Skywatcher's YouTube channel out of Portugal. Carlos does an excellent job recording the, the sunsets. This is a video he posted on March 26th when they were engulfed in Sahara sand, and they're still dealing with Sahara sand. Right now, as I do this video, Carlos was right here down in southwestern Spain in Portugal, and he recorded the, the sunset like he does every day. He does an excellent job. And the Sahara sand actually allowed him to, to zoom in and get a very good look at those sunspots. And again, that's the sunspot that, that generated the Earth-directed M4 class solar flare that will more than likely create northern lights for high, high latitude sky watchers. And as we mentioned earlier, it is in route right now as I do this video. More than likely, uh, high latitude sky watchers at least will see auroras. Have your cameras ready on the 31st as that's the estimated arrival time of this CME. And don't forget to check out Carlos Skywatcher's YouTube channel. Link down below in the description box. Coming back to the Sahara sand, that's how he was viewing the sun that day. It's still spreading far and spreading wide. It's made its way now over into the southern Caribbean, all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, and it's kind of done a left-hand turn. It went up into Spain and France, and now you can see it's coming back out into the Atlantic Ocean, spanning north of the United Kingdom, stretching over to Iceland and Greenland, reaching all across Asia, over into Japan, and just an unbelievable sight. Looks like the whole globe now is being affected by this Sahara sand. Coming over here to the homepage of the website, the new photo I posted today sent in by Chad out of Texas. That's not being influenced by the Sahara sand. You can see the sun is definitely dimmed out by something here, and it's actually turned it bright red. We often see that when the sun is behind wildfire smoke. And Chad said there was wildfires in Texas. That photo was from yesterday. And you can see the, the red icons on this map. Those are active wildfires right now in the state of Texas. The green ones as well. And more than likely, those were generated by lightning strikes from the, the recent storms that went through the area. And here's another excellent photo of the sun sent in by Carlos Skywatcher. Looks like a version of Jupiter. There's that sunspot once again. And the very heavy presence of Sahara sand in the sky that day made the sun appear like a version of Jupiter as it was setting from Portugal. Great job, guys. Keep the photos and videos coming. If you have any photos you'd like to share, you can send those to reports at MrMBB333.com. Thanks for watching. Have a super day, and be safe out there.